Bo McMillan's passion for food started at an early age growing up in New England. Fresh food from the ocean and land was abundant there. But some of his greatest memories were made in his grandmother's kitchen in Montreal. That passion led Bo to a restaurant job as a short order cook when he was just 14 years old. By 17, he was already working in top kitchens and well on his way. McMillan's been a fan favorite on the Food Network as a host and as a contestant, and he co wrote the Alzheimer's Prevention Cookbook, 100 Recipes to Boost Brain Health. He spent nearly 20 years in Arizona at Sanctuary on Camelback Mountain, where his cuisine at Elements has been called a fine dining gem. Gourmet Magazine calls it one of the top 100 restaurants in the country. He's affectionately known as Bo Mac by guests and chefs alike, and we are pleased to welcome Bo Mac to the dish. I'm pleased to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. And tell us what you brought. So I brought a bunch of different stuff, family style. That's a way to eat, passing yep. and sharing. I've got some real simple Szechuan green beans, which is a lot of fun. These are one of my favorite signature dishes at the restaurant. These are like kimchi style Brussels sprouts with red dragon oh, and wow. crispy pork belly. Oh, sounds really incredible. Good. Rock shrimp sticky rice. Ooh. The sauce that glazes that is a seaweed sauce made with ginger and sesame. It's delicious. Of course, the lobster udon, the fiery lobster udon, it has Chinese sausage and bok choy and mushrooms, very fragrant, rich, and one of my favorite all time classics a, just a chocolate, milk chocolate peanut butter pie family style. Wow. Wow, that just looks amazing. You know, it's so interesting about your story is that you knew pretty early on this is what you wanted to do. I mean, 14 years old, you're a short order cook. How did that all come about? It happened because I realized early that I wasn't going to be the valedictorian of my high school. <laughs> and uh, in the A lot of people realize that, but they don't yeah. know the next step. That's true. That's true. A, a best friend of mine had an uncle that had a little restaurant. And Instantly, I knew I've got to be involved in this. I got to cook in, in the creative side. I was always a creative person. Right. And I think that there's no greater way to express yourself, you know, it, through food. It's my first language. So by 17, you really had a kind of a life changing job, didn't you? I did. I really did. I had a mentor. I stumbled upon this restaurant in Plymouth, Mass, called the Cranebrook Tea Room. 30 seats. We did the menus fresh every day, wrote them every day, and I worked for the chef, his name was Francois de Milo. Mm. Right. I re literally was filling out my application for the job and he offered me a piece of cake and at first I refused and then I was like, maybe I upset him. You know, I was like, oh, I'm trying to the wrong thing. <laughs> You're <laughs> And so ultimately I tried it and I said, at that moment, I had no idea food could actually taste that good. And it was just on another level. And I said to myself, if I can be half as good as this man, I'm gonna yeah. be somebody someday. And I try to tell young people now in the field, be patient, and if you want to be an amazing chef, you've got to be an amazing cook. Mm. It's got to start that way, and, and, and don't rush it. You know, that's the, the most fun I've ever had in my life in this career has been cooking. Mm. Now, you've been at Camelback since 1998. I have. I mean, how do you go from growing up, working on the East Coast, and making your way out west like that? The desert was the last place I ever thought I would wind <laughs> yeah. up, but a gentleman called me, and I just, the timing, I got lucky. I was working in Los Angeles at two great hotels for amazing chefs, and I came out to, on a whim, thinking, what's in Arizona, like tumbleweeds and cactus? Yeah. I don't know, right, you know? <laughs> and I got out there. And with, Classic with, East with, Coast with, view, yeah, yes. Yeah, within two days, I was like, this is so beautiful, and I have an opportunity here. And uh, about a year into it, the boss closed down and sank $55 million into the property and reopened as sanctuary. So it was just jackpot timing, and I've never looked back. Can we talk briefly about Iron Chef? Because you, you, you famously yeah. defeated Bobby Flay, like beating Muhammad Ali. If, <laughs> um, how did that change things for you, if, if at all? You know, it changed my life incredibly. I remember one of my bosses who was on the set that day, he came up to me after and he's like, you have no idea what you've done. You have no idea what you've just done. <laughs> and I was thinking, I, I, I won a competition. Like I could face Bobby 10 times. He might beat me nine out of 10, you know? So that was my day. Afterwards, I just knew it may change my life and I'm grateful for that, I'm blessed for that, but it's not gonna change me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? um, tell me about this annual event you hold. Every year you have this gathering, right? Where you Love have it. guests mm -hmm. and master chefs, yep. not just from around the country, from around the world. Tell we us do. about that. We do, and Lunch and Learn is in its 15th year. Wow. So proud of, the, of all the support we've had and really anytime you get the opportunity to celebrate food and wine with other chefs, they come. And I, I've been blessed. It's such a great program. You guys got to come oh. spend some time with me in the summer. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. All right. Well, Bo Mac, if I yes. may call you Bo Mac. Yes. Um, I'm going to have you sign this dish okay. and then answer the question for me. If you could share this meal with anyone, past or present, who would it be? I love it. I, I, I would have to go, and it sounds cliche, but 
My grandmother yeah. is one of the greatest people on earth, and it was about the caring she provided, and it was about making sure everyone was comfortable, and I learned at the table. And uh, for me, I had just so many great experiences. She was from Montreal, Quebec, right outside in a little town called Hemingford, and some of my greatest memories are just are involved around people I love, sharing amazing bounty and what's available through food with, with, with her, and I would kill to have her back. Mm. All right, Chef Bo McMillan, thank you so much. Honored to be really here. We appreciate it. Thank you. And for more on Bo McMillan and the dish, head to our website at cbsthismorning.com.